how we pop them these days. You know, I'm getting so bad. I, when I go for looking for wine for dinner, I'm like, what is in a screw top? <laughs> <laughs> Salud. Hi there, and welcome back to our channel. I'm Karen, and I'm the winemaker here at Buttonwood Farm Winery. And I'm Brett Reeves, and I'm the assistant winemaker here at Buttonwood. And today, we're going to talk about carbonic maceration, and how we started that here at Buttonwood, and why we do it, and all the geeky things about it. It's a uh different fermentation style where instead of a, a yeast driven fermentation it's enzymatic and the berries ferment from the inside don't get a lot of skin contact it's sealed in a tank and completely anaerobic and there's no punch downs or pump overs so it just provides a more fruit forward and lighter style wine so what we do basically is we pick uh, the grapes and they come in as whole clusters. We have a kind of low ceiling in the tank that we use for this particular wine. So we have a bucket brigade really and what happens is there are shovels and pails and we go up and down stairs a lot and we dump these whole clusters into this tank which we have already sparged with carbon dioxide uh, and we fill it up about three quarters of the way full and then we lock down the tank. And I have to say the first year that we did this it was um, a little frightening. Usually you have to worry about um, making sure that um, CO2 is being released from the tanks. The tank doesn't explode. Um, and it didn't. And uh, uh, we just leave the grapes in there for about three and a half weeks and test it every once in a while to see how it's doing as far as uh, fermenting. We don't add any yeast. All we do is put grape clusters into a tank, seal it up, and wait. When it looks like a lot of the sugar has been consumed and uh, transformed into alcohol, we shovel out, which is almost as much fun as shoveling in, and we then press those clusters. You dig out the tank and the fruit and you press it still sweet, usually around 11 or 12 bricks, so there's still a significant amount of sugar. Put it into barrel and you let it ferment the rest of the way in barrel. And we bottle it the immediate spring after we harvested it. And that's it. So easy. <laughs> Well, it's traditionally best known for Gamay, and people might know wines from the Beaujolais Nouveau type of thing, which are made in this method in order to provide a, a young, fruit forward, fresh wine. Uh, here at Buttonwood, we do this mostly with Cabernet Franc, although we love doing it so much and it produces such a really wonderful wine, both for a blending wine for our varietal bottlings and also on its own. So. Cabernet Franc is uh, our main bottling of this. We did an experiment in 2020 with Malbec as well, and we're gonna bottle a little bit of that this year as well. But I guess you could do it with any red grape. Yeah, so we find a lot of really fun aromas when we do these carbonic style fermentations. Because there's not a lot of skin and tannin integration, you get a lot of really bright red, fruit fruit notes, candied fruit, watermelon, cherry, and because it's a whole cluster fermentation, you get a lot of influence from the stems as well. So you get a little bit of herbaceous root beer, sarsaparilla type aromas going on, and it's it's really fun. It just always has that really like bright cherry candy note, or like watermelon Jolly Rancher. I get raspberries and root beer. Yeah, totally. I think it's a very traditional method of making Gamay and Beaujolais Nouveau mostly and I think it's just kind of come over here and people are starting to utilize it in different ways on different varietals. We have found with our Bordeaux that it, it works great. I know of some people doing it with Rhones as well. It's just a very different way of making wine in California that you don't really see a lot. I feel like it's kind of come into its own age in the past five or so years here and come more into the forefront, but it's been around forever. At the same time, it's traditional. It, it, to us, it's really new and geeky. And I, I think also that a, a lot of these ancient methods that were perhaps foo-fooed by science 
you know, because you really can't measure a lot of this, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of that, uh, that era of making super clean by the books recipe wines are coming around to some of these ancient methods. Like, um, I mean, carbonic, obviously, this probably just started on its own, right? I mean, it wasn't something that somebody designed. There was grapes in a tank and it made itself. And, you know, it's like Petnat, too, another old thing that's new again. So it, it does take away some control from winemaking, mm -hmm. and that is a little bit uh, nerve-wracking. But you have to just sometimes let nature do its thing, and that's really what this is. Yeah. And, I mean, going back to the aromas, it's that's geeky, too. Yeah. You know, a lot of people aren't super into very stemmy Normal. style wines, yeah. but it, it I think as winemakers, it's just something that's very different and unique for us that definitely piques our interest. And a lot of these we first make for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. if it turns out well for the public and we have enough to share, then we will, right? Yeah. And I mean, it, it almost follows the whole natural wine movement in a way too. In a good way. Yeah, in, in a good way, yeah. for sure. Not too funky. So why do we call it carbonique? Because it's kind of a cool word, and it says carbonic and button speak. We like to chill it, and I know a lot of people don't think about chilling red wines. And in many cases, I believe personally that we tend to serve our white wines too cold and our red wines too warm. But this one really is delightful, chilled down. In particular, if you're on a hot summer day and you're having a barbecue, just put this one in the refrigerator and treat it as if it were a white wine and serve it at about 55 degrees. And eventually what's gonna happen is it will warm up and you're going to, you're going to get this like uh, explosion of the, the aromas on it, but it just um, is a very refreshing uh, red wine to have. It was initially an experiment and it's just turned out really well and it, I feel like it continues to get better and better. It's a gorgeous wine. So if you're new here, subscribe to our channel and please like this video and share it with others. If you have any questions about Carbonic, please leave us a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching. Cheers and we hope to see you out here. Nailed it. <laughs>